you suggest? What would be your advice to people to become a better conversationalist? Well, the first thing you have to do is you have to help them understand that it's not about selling a piece of property, right? Because so many of us are, so many newer agents and people that are having trouble with the conversations or scared to make calls or whatever it is, they're looking at it completely, they're wrong, right? They're, they're viewing the activity as the end goal to, to close a deal when really the end goal should be just to create a friendship, right? When you take the transaction out of the equation, it should take just about all the pressure off, right? And then allow you to open up. If you ask a buyer or seller at the end of the deal how they pick their agent, the most common answer is gonna be they had a friend in the business, right? And that's becoming more and more of a trend because when digital came out for a while, it was so, you know, more than half of our buyers found their agent online. But after we've went through a large cycle of that, I think buyers have went back towards somebody they already know and have a relationship with because they've had bad experiences with just picking any agent online. And so they're going with people who are either recommended to them or somebody that they know or already did a deal with and have some experience with. So it's actually trending towards relationships and and uh, who actually has built their brand with that person more and more and more every day. Personal brand is becoming more and more equitable you know, in the industry. But when you take the transaction out and you make it about just having a just conversation with the end goal not to necessarily do a deal, you know, but just to find out more about them, how they're doing, what's going on with them. If they have an agent they would work with, if they were to do something, is there anything I can do to help you today? You know, or your house it, it came off the market and expired. Whatever happened with that? What can I do to help? Because I'll tell you what are the big problems, and that is mainstream training and coaches and, and brokers even out there preaching the 1980 scripts and the strategies around, you know, would you consider selling? Would you consider moving? Do you know anybody that wants to buy, a buy or sell? If not, then what if I could get you top dollar? Would you do it then? It's like this high pressure, and, and, it, and it puts most of the industry who gets exposed to that early in their career in a really bad spot because they think this is how the business is done and it's not who they are as people. And so I'm trying to teach the real estate community how to communicate who they are as a person, that they care about people, that they want the best, that they're honest, dependable, hardworking. But when they get these scripts put in front of them, that's not communicating who they are. What the prospect's hearing is, is, hey, Mr. Seller, you don't know me and I don't know you, but will you sell your house so I can make some money? Right? Yeah, that's what I'm here for is to see if you want to sell so I can list your property and or help you buy something so I can make a commission. And we need to reverse that. We need to let the prospect know that, hey, we don't, we're not here to do a deal. We're here to see if there's something I can do to help you. Right? And so that's what I'm trying to do is reverse the entire mindset of the industry towards what can the agents do for the prospects, not what the prospects can do for the agents. And if you stand behind the confidence that you are genuinely there to help people and not just to try to do a deal, then that should really erase a lot of the fear and a lot of the um, negative thoughts you have about communicating. Here, here's what I would say. If this prospect was your mother or your dad or your brother or cousin or uncle, how would you talk to them? And if you may take a mental snapshot and start trying to emulate that same feeling with your prospects and you give the vibe that you're treating them like you would your mom, dad, brother, or cousin, they feel that same love and energy, then they're going to give it right back to you. And now we're heading in the right direction. Your business and your brand from working with the consumer to now even coaching and working with agents seems to come from a place of contribution. Like if, mm. if I had to like boil your whole brand down to one word, I would say contribution. It doesn't seem like you ever ask anyone for something until you contribute something to them. Mm. So let me ask you this. Is that like intentional? Is that like some Jedi mind trickery, reverse psychology, or is that really who Ricky is? It's really who Ricky is because here's the thing. I help people that have no opportunity at all to help me, right? 
Like there's there's agents that I talk to that uh, have no, there's no way in the world that they can help me in any kind of way. They're not gonna join my team or they're already on a team or they, uh, they just tell me straight up or whatever. And I'll still spend 30, 45 minutes with them trying to coach them and help them, right? And so when the relationships over transaction movement that I've started is is not about helping people who only helping people who can help you and your business right like it's not about only uh, helping people who can buy property from you or only helping agents who can join your team or only helping people because they have there's something connected where they could actually you could benefit from right it's about helping people regardless if, if they can help you or not, right? Helping everyone regardless. That's where you go to the next level of this and really start to see your business really explode, you know, because there, there's levels to this, right? So like the, re the reason why I lost everything in the beginning of my career is because I focused on solely the transaction and it took me having to lose everything and go through that to realize it's about people. So when I got back in the business, I was still like 50-50 trying to help people 50% and trying to just close deals. The other half, you can't just go cold turkey. And then over time that moved to 60-40, right? And then the 70-30 and then the 80-20 over the years. And then by the time I started coaching, I was probably 90-10 or even 95-5, just purely just trying to help without expecting anything, still trying to close the deal a really small percentage of the time when I felt like the moment was right to try to close the deal. And then through that process, you realize, okay, it's relationships over transactions, but you're not quite there because you're still only helping people and spending time with people who can actually help you or help your business or become a customer. I think I could probably, there's a chance, I could probably be making, I don't know this, but I could probably be making more money if I would just focus on the money part of this. You know, however, I feel like I'm giving up money now, possibly spending time with people who can't help me. And I feel like that's an investment towards an even bigger situation later. Now, I know that's coming right back to saying, oh, well, now you're helping people because there's a bigger payoff later. But this is legacy. Right? The bigger payoff later for me doesn't have to be monetary, right? It could be literally the fact that after I'm dead and gone, agents are still reaping the benefits of my content and my philosophies and so on and so forth.